Uh, Mr. Jeffries. Uh, thank you, Chairman Nadler. Thank you, Director Ray, for your presence and your service to this country. The dramatic uh, rise in anti-Semitic and anti-Asian violence throughout this country is unacceptable, unconscionable, and un-American. So let me begin, uh, Director Ray, by just urging you and the FBI to dedicate all necessary resources to deal with and address this scourge. Uh, Director Ray, violent white supremacy is the most persistent and lethal threat to the American homeland, correct? Whoop. We, well, the way we look at it, we've categorized it. I think we're saying the same thing, but just to be clear, we have elevated racially motivated violent extremism, the vast majority of which is motivated by uh, uh, advocacy on behalf of white superiority as to, uh, at our highest threat priority level. Uh, that's commensurate with ISIS. And it is certainly true that over the last few years, the most lethal attacks here in the homeland uh, have been by individuals of that racially motivated violent extremist uh, category, specifically those advocating for the superiority of the white race. Right, otherwise known as white supremacists. Uh, so the largest group, just to clarify, of racially motivated violent extremists are white supremacist organizations, is that right? Well, I wouldn't say organizations, but individuals. The largest oh. portion of the largest portion of, of domestic terrorist investigations that we have, and uh, and arrests or investigations of the racially well, motivated. Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, let me ask you about organizations. The Oath Keepers are a white supremacist organization. True. Uh, I'm not sure that I can characterize their ideology. I would say that we have charged a number of individuals related to specific terrorist activity or violent activity, maybe is a better way of putting it, who self-identify with the Oath Keepers. And I think some of those individuals are ones that we would put in this racially motivated violent extremist category. Uh, we also have a number of such investigations of individuals who self-identify with the Proud Boys uh, in a similar vein. But again, in each of those instances, we're not charging them for their membership in Oath Keepers or Proud Boys. We're charging them Understood. based on their, their violent criminal activity. Uh, Understood. The FBI respects the First Amendment. So do we in Congress. And we, we can agree on that. Uh, you anticipated my next question. The Oath Keepers clearly are a white supremacist organization. That's my observation, not yours. Uh, but happy to have you join me in that characterization. Would you say that the neo-Nazis are a white supremacist organization? Well, I certainly, th when I use the term neo-Nazis, I think of them as people who are advocating for white supremacy. That's at least the way I think of that term. Okay. I'm wondering, why is the FBI generally reluctant to use the term violent white supremacy? I don't, I mean, I think we use the term racially motivated violent extremism partly because we're trying to make clear to our people and everyone who's involved that our focus, that doesn't mean everybody else's focus, but our focus is on the violence. And so part of the reason we changed some of our nomenclature was to make especially sure that what's important to us, and it gets back to this idea that we have one standard, it doesn't matter what your motivation is or how abhorrent or despicable your motivation is, what we have to be focused on is the violence. I understand that uh, the violence is largely being driven by uh, white supremacy as an ideology. If you don't name the problem and claim the problem, it seems to me that it's hard to tame the problem. That's why I'm raising uh, this particular uh, issue. In terms of domestic terrorism, uh, I think you've testified in the past that this is uh, a growing problem that we've experienced in America, correct? Domestic terrorism? Absolutely. That's correct. Yes. And I would argue that it is actually a problem that has been with us uh, for centuries. We know that the KKK was founded in 1865. That's a terrorist organization. Uh, we know that the lynchings that took place in the 1800s and the 1900s were acts of domestic terror. The murder, the brutal killing of Emmett Till uh, in 1955, that was an act of domestic terror. The bombings of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, which took place in 1963, 
that was an act of domestic terror, killing four beautiful black little girls. This most recent January 6th instance, the attack on the Capitol that resulted in death and mayhem was an act of domestic terror. And the through line through all of those instances is white supremacy. I hope that the FBI will use all of its resources to tackle this persistent problem. I yield back. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my 
my former office, you know, the Department of Justice. I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanna prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.